when I decided in my life that I was going to be a singer-songwriter, okay, I thought it was going to go something like this. I thought I was going to play a bunch of shows, and then some guy in like an alligator leather suit of some kind with like greasy hair was going to walk up to me and be like, I'm going to make you a star. And then he was going to unroll this thing that said record contract on it, and I was going to sign my name, and then I was going to be playing the Massey Halls and all the most beautiful venues in the world. It wasn't on my radar. It wasn't anywhere in my brain that I was going to be on a mountaintop with a bunch of teenagers because I had taken these songs that I'd written in my bedroom and gotten up on a stage and started playing them for people. It wasn't on my radar that I'd get an email from a woman telling me that as her baby was being born, she put my music on in the birthing room so her child could enter the world to the sound of my voice. It wasn't on my radar that I'd get an email from a woman telling me that she was getting married, but that her father couldn't walk her down the aisle because he had passed away a couple years earlier. So as a way of still kind of having him there, she walked down the aisle to a song of mine that the two of them had loved together as a way of having him there. It wasn't on my radar that I'd get an email from a woman named Barbara telling me that as her husband of nearly 50 years was dying in the hospital, asked to put on one of my songs, and they put on my music for him, and they held each other, and he died listening to my music. And for her 75th birthday, her kids wanted to do something to cheer her up after a really difficult year, so they hired me as a surprise to show up at her birthday party. And she walks in, and I'm standing there, and she just like drops everything that she's holding. And for the next 90 minutes, it was all request hour for Barbara in her living room. None of those things were on my radar. And all of those things for me are proof that we don't actually know the full impact of the work we're doing out in the world. We don't control that part. We control how we show up. And the biggest challenge of all, I really believe, is that we're just human beings trying to do all of this. We're just human beings. And as human beings, what can happen is there can be a disconnect between how we need to show up on the outside to do all these things we're trying to do and what it actually feels like to be who we are on the inside. But on the other side of us finding a way to manage that disconnect is us showing up wholeheartedly, courageously with our full humanity and setting the stage for those impacts to occur. You know, people keep saying over these last months that life is on hold, but life isn't on hold, right? These are our minutes. And every job, no matter the role, it holds the potential for creating amazing impacts. The key variable is how we show up. So this is Oliver's tune. And if you can imagine, it takes place on the stage at that final show. And though I've got my number I am calm here in the storm Cause my hands still are hungry Spirit warm and in view all around me, my friends have gathered near, and all I've ever needed is right here. But if I look too far ahead of me, I stumble into tragedy, and really it's not sad, you see, cause here I am playing my final song Doing what I've been doing All along And you can 
can call it courage or you can call it strong but really it's just simply carrying on while amplifying all the good you've been engaging in with only just a few less days to squeeze all of it in. but if i look too far ahead of me Tragedy, but really it's not sad, you see. Cause here I am playing my final song with all of you surrounding me. So when I'm free from gravity, I will know that I was never wrong. Doing what I was doing. not one to tell people what it is they should do but if you're asking then I guess there's one thing I would say to you do those things you've always wanted